Join us now on Flickr at flickr.com slash groups slash art of photography. Welcome to the Art of Photography, everybody. I'm Ted Forbes. Today we're going to talk about metering without a light meter. Now, let's say that you're using an older mechanical camera, or maybe you're shooting on a DSLR that uses, uh, old, and you're using some older lenses that uh, the camera's not designed to go with. A lot of times you can still shoot with those, but you do lose your metering capabilities. Well, what can you do? You don't have a light meter with you. Well, what I'm going to show you today is the Sunny 16 method of metering. Okay, now Sunny 16 is real easy. This applies to outdoors on a bright sunny day. What you're simply going to do is set your aperture to f16 okay and this is a uh, manual camera so I tweak everything just like that uh, but anyway I've set this to f16 and the second part of this is matching your shutter speed close to the ISO of, of the film you're shooting or whatever you have your DSLR set at for ISO okay so let's say for our examples here that I have 100 speed film in here then what I need to do is pick the closest shutter speed to f100 and it's going to come around and I'm going to be at 1 1 25th of a second and that's all you need to do. If you, if you closely match the shutter speed to the ISO, and then you set your f-stop to f-16, you're gonna be guaranteed pretty much a good exposure. Now, there are some variances on this. What if it's a little cloudy outside, or what if it's overcast? Well, if it's a little bit cloudy, all you need is one more stop of light. So what you're gonna do is simply go from f-16 down to f-11, or, let's go back to 16, you can uh, also set your shutter speed to be one stop slower. So I will go from 125 down to 60. And uh, that will kind of have a, a, um, a reasonable effect when uh, I get a little bit of overcast uh, light in there with clouds. Now, if it's really overcast, like it's legitimately cloudy, looks like it's gonna rain, you may need to give it another stop beyond that. So I would go from 60 down to 30, or I could stay at 1 1 25th and adjust my aperture ring from 16 past 11 down to eight for, for, for a really overcast day. So that's basically how that works. And if you have trouble kind of defining what is a little bit cloudy, what is overcast. What I like to do is I just use the shadows you see on the ground, and it depends on how to find the edges. If it's really sunny out, you're gonna have a really crisp, clean line around the edge of your shadows, and that you're pretty much gonna go straight on sunny 16 for something like that. If the shadows have a little bit of blur to their edges and they start to lose a little bit of their, um, their contrast, then you probably wanna open it a stop to F11. Now, if uh, you're overcast and you start the shadows start to disappear, that's when you're gonna need to increase it another stop beyond that. Now, having said that, that there are some other variables here which might actually make things brighter. If you're in a high altitude climate and you're shooting outdoors, or particularly if you're either on the beach where there's sand or you're out in the snow, snow and sand will both reflect light. And in that case, I would actually give the, uh, give the shutter, uh, excuse me, the aperture another stop down. So if you're <clears throat> set at 100 speed film, 125 of a sec, uh, one, one, one of a second is your ISO, and you're at f16. If you're shooting either on a beach where there's sand, or you're shooting in the snow, what I would do is come down to f22. And if you don't want to stop down that far, and sometimes lenses get weird when they stop down too far, um, you can just adjust your shutter speed. And I want to make this go one stop faster, so I would take it from one one twenty fifth up to two hundred, and you're good to go there. Now, the best thing you can do is get out and shoot and experiment with things, especially you guys that are on. DSLRs and shooting digital cameras, um, you know, you're not wasting film, so there's no reason not to experiment with things. And really get used to looking at your exposure, uh, seeing if your highlights are getting blown out or if your shadows are starting to lose detail, you know that you're either too bright or too dark. And uh, really, you can kind of start to develop an eye for this after a while. And you can actually even, uh, we'll start here, I think this is enough for most people to, to take on right now, but we'll do another podcast um, in the near future where we talk about indoor lighting. And you can actually, uh, uh, you need to go with higher ISOs, but you can get used to different lighting conditions inside too, and usually be close. Now, one other thing I want to mention to you is uh, if it's mission critical, if you're shooting film, or maybe you just can't read your LCD screen on your digital camera that well because you're in bright sunlight, another technique that you can apply here is what's known as bracketing. And a lot of professional photographers bracket anyway, just in case. Um, and basically what this entails is shooting three pictures, if you're gonna go with kind of a classic bracket pattern. And the first one you shoot at the exposure you believe is correct. Okay, so let's say sunny 16, I've got 100 ISO film, 1 1 25th of a second, I'm shooting at f16. And uh, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and make the first shot at f16. I'll take the second shot at f11, I'll overexpose at one stop. And then I'll do a third 
shot at f22 underexposed a shot or you could do this on the shutter dial too uh, just in one stop increments and usually what this does is it just kind of gives you a little bit of leeway to go with um, a lot of times in a professional situation even if you've metered uh, just in case to make sure your color saturation is just right and your exposure is just right a lot of photographers will at least bracket in a third of a stop in either direction if not a full stop so anyway a little bit of bracketing ensures that you uh, you're gonna have uh, another shot to play with in case the first one wasn't exposed correctly but uh, anyway, I hope that helps. So this has been The Art of Photography, and thanks for watching.